Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna do a maintenance repot on this slipper orchid. Beautiful, isn't he? Now, maintenance repots refer to those repottings that occur due to natural causes. Maybe your orchid simply doesn't fit in the pot anymore. Maybe the medium just broke down a little bit too much, which is the case with this particular orchid. You've had an orchid for quite a while. It is time to repot it because that's the nature of things in cultivation, in home growing. So there's nothing actually wrong with the orchid. It kind of just needs attention. And I decided to choose a slipper orchid because these guys can look slightly scary in time, even though nothing's actually wrong with them. So I want to discuss a little bit about that because if you're new to slipper orchids, after a while you might be a little scared of what you're seeing. Joey! 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 Honey, I'm recording! She doesn't care about me. Excuse the noises. <laughs> anyway, so before we start, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and why not subscribe? I do post super often on this channel. All sorts of plant content lately. I know, very weird. After eight years of orchids, I'm starting to grow other plants. It was about to happen eventually, I just didn't think it would be after eight and a half years. Better late than never. Right, let me give my gloves on and let's do this. I'm trying to make her a little bit quieter by offering her a bath. I think she accepts it. Don't you? Yes, yes you do, little Joey. Good bird, good bird. Alrighty, so I didn't actually tell you what this orchid is. This is Paphiopetalum leucositum cross with a uh, it's that path. It's the one I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce. You're gonna have a tag on the screen. So the problem with this Paphiopetalum is that it has been potted in this medium for a little over two years. It is time to repot it. Now, if you don't know what medium or potting mix I'm using, I always put it down below in the description. I'm using the Repti Bark Bark, which is not the best quality bark, but it's available in my pet shops. I don't actually need to import it from anywhere, spend money on transport and all of that. It will do. And also I have the, <laughs> I don't know why I'm showing you, a little bit of sphagnum moss, but yeah, this is the sphag moss from Best Grow, which I do believe is fairly available throughout multiple countries around the world. And this is what this orchid is potted in as well. Not entirely sure how much sphagnum moss I used. It looks like I actually used a little bit more bark. This medium is so broken down that I cannot really see exactly the ratio that's left in here, but it is time to repot because I digged a little bit inside the medium and I found a little bit of mold, which is just going to happen with old organic media. There's no way to prevent it. At some point, organic media will break down because that is what it's supposed to do. It is not live medium. This is not a live tree. The bark does not regenerate. It just breaks down. If you've ever mulched anything in your life, that's pretty much what's happening. Due to the fact that we keep watering orchids, degradation continues every time we water. The medium will degrade a little bit more. And of course, with orchids that stay a little bit more moist than others, degradation happens faster. It is the law of nature, hence why sometimes we need to repot our orchids due to maintenance reasons. Now, I made sure to fully saturate the pot and the medium. I watered this orchid this morning, that's why I have a little water here, so that I make the process a lot gentler, a lot easier for the roots. Generally speaking, and even with slipper orchids, if the roots are fairly dry, they're gonna be pretty brittle. If they're wet, they're gonna be more flexible, which is what we're looking for here. Oh, Joey's really enjoying her bath. <laughs> now, sometimes it happens that orchids outgrow their pot before the medium actually breaks down. And that's okay, that's reason enough to repot as well, depending on the orchid. It's not the case with my orchid. I simply have a case of just needing some fresh new medium. And obviously, if you're using inorganic media, you're not going to have to do these repottings because inorganic media will not break down. However, if you do see dead roots throughout the pieces of medium you're using, it is reason enough to repot that orchid because no matter if the medium is organic or not, those dead roots will start to break down and will acidify the environment, pretty much getting you to the point where a breaking down medium would get you as well. 
So bottom line, in cultivation, since we don't have all of the natural processes and the setting that these guys would find in their natural habitat, we need to play a little bit mother nature. We're gonna refresh the medium, the orchid will not even know it happened because we're gonna do so carefully. So the pot is already saturated with water, I'm gonna press a little bit on it. Not so important with this orchid because I don't have a ton of roots on it, but with some orchids it is actually important to squeeze a little bit the pot and oh the smell is not fun either look at that i did use sphagnum moss as well it smells like a broken down medium it doesn't smell bad bad i definitely had worse cases but let's just say it smells like it needs a repot right okay so i'm gonna remove all of this medium from around the roots to the best of my abilities being gentle with the roots Slipper orchids generally do have pretty sensitive roots, pretty snappy roots. Look at that, I do have some dead roots to remove. Now Joey is the director. Alrighty then, so yeah, the medium is broken down, but I don't have suspicious activities such as mushrooms and all sorts of stuff. There's not even a lot of mold, it was just a little bit there at the top. Everything is okay, so mm, I'm gonna dispose of this outside and I'm going to rinse the root system of my orchid. Not gonna spray it with hydrogen peroxide, there's no need to. This is an older orchid in my collection, there are no snails, there is no mushrooms or fungi or things of the sorts, there's no need. I'm just gonna rinse a little bit the root system to remove some of this decaying matter. And yeah, just get rid of this outside. Oh boy, oh boy, it smells horrible. Alrighty then, so here's the fun part about Paphiopetalum orchids and the rest of the slipper orchids. They're not monopodial. I know they look a little bit like Phalaenopsis orchids, maybe even Vandas, but they're not. Their growth pattern is the same as Oncidiums, Cattleyas, Dendrobiums, all orchids that produce a rhizome with pseudobulbs. Now instead of pseudobulbs, the Paphiopetalum creates fans. As you can see, each fan produces a flower spike from the very top. This is a terminal spike, which means after the flowers fade, this orchid will not grow from the top again. It doesn't have a proper crown that grows continuously like Phalaenopsis. What it does, it creates offshoots, so new growths practically like Oncidiums, and this is how it continues its growth. Now, after a while, these old growths that bloomed and spend their energy on producing new shoots will kind of just die off together with their roots. So this orchid actually had quite a few dead roots that I disposed of. And by the way, if you want a proper care tutorial for Paphiopetalums and slippers, including a proper repot, do check the description down below. I do have a beginner tutorial. I'm not gonna insist on a lot of details today. We're just maintaining <laughs> this orchid. So if you feel like you wanna pause this video, go check that one out, come back, you can absolutely do so. But just like any other orchid, the roots which are not alive anymore on this orchid will be mushy and need removing. Now, naturally, the color of the roots on Paphiopetalums is brown, so that's not a sign that the roots are dead. You have to press on them. If they're stiff, they're good. If they're mushy, they're gone. You have to remove them. But what happens is, very, very old growths will completely dry off, like this growth over here. This is a very, very old growth. Now, typically, with these guys, it's super safe to just remove them. And to do so, all you need to do is just separate the entirety of this growth. Now sadly, this growth had some roots which were still good, although not the best, I have to say so. I didn't lose much there. Oh, and this root is already mushy here. But typically, you can see older growths will completely die off. Now what you don't want to do is remove older growths that are still green and are producing new shoots, like this one. In this case, the new shoots don't have roots of their own, they're still attached to the mother plant and they still depend on these roots and on the mother plant, which I shouldn't say mother plant, this is not a keiki. They still depend on the previous fan, so in this case, be extra, extra gentle. Typically, slippers are pretty wobbly. They're not very, very robust compared to Phalaenopsis, so be careful not to wobble these guys too much. This, do not detach, let it be as it is and try to be gentle with it. Here we have another example. In this case, we removed that very old growth. We are left with this growth, which is old. You can see it bloomed, uh, but we have a Joey. Oh, 
Oh, she's attacking my psychopedalum. <laughs> Honey, mommy needs that psychopedalum. Don't attack it, okay? Come here. Maybe she wanted some cream. <laughs> All right, so we are going to leave this shoot alone as well. I have a dead root here and another one here, but that's all I'm gonna do. If you're afraid you're gonna do something bad, you can let them be. Many Paphiopetalums don't have the abscission line, so you cannot just pull on the yellow leaf and it's gonna come off like in the case of the Phalaenopsis. Usually you need to cut it, just cut away these leaves like so. And you can leave the very old growth be. So if you don't want to do what I just did right now, which looks a little sketchy, I won't lie, but yeah, you know, that's how it is. Just leave the old growths be. I didn't bring a pot, did I? I want to change the pot. I want a pot with a cone. So I'm not going to reuse the same pot, although I can definitely do so. I don't have a lot of roots. Just give it a good wash and it's ready to go, but I will use a brand new pot. All right, so the medium that I'm going to be using is exactly the same. I will use the same type of bark and the same type of sphagnum moss. It lasted me two years. So this one shall last me another two. Now, sometimes it might actually happen that new growths will just be split from their mother fan. Let's put it like that. Situation is not ideal, I'm not gonna lie. But obviously you might be in luck, particularly if the new growth is kind of big like this one. If it's super tiny, I don't think it's gonna make it. But if it's kind of big like this, you can just go ahead and pot it and hopefully it will start to create new roots, which I think this one did. I'm actually going to remove this leaf. There we go, it's yellowing, it's not good anymore. This one, I do see a little bit of a little bump there. I think it's ready to create roots of its own, which is great. So if your new growth looks like this, you do have chances. Just pot it separately, tiny little pot, treat it like any normal Paphiopetalum, and hopefully we'll produce roots soon enough and get hydrated. So it's always worth trying, obviously, but it's not ideal. So do try to keep mother fans together with their shoots until new roots form. So I'm gonna be placing both of these parts of my orchid in the same pot. One thing with Paphiopetalums is that you should never ever place them very high in the pot. Roots do not grow in the air. This is not an epiphytic orchid. Generally speaking, there might be some epiphytic species of slippers, but most of them are terrestrial or semi-terrestrial. So their roots will definitely not grow in the air. All of their roots need to be inside the potting mix. Now the potting mix I'm using is a very basic and typical one, as I was saying. The bark that I'm using, which actually degraded more than the sphagnum moss, this moss is pretty high quality. I like it. But the bark, you know, not the best of qualities, but it will do the trick. If you find better quality materials, you can actually get away having the orchid in the same mix for three years. Maybe four years, I don't know. It also depends how wet the orchid stays. Slipper orchids don't like to be super dry, so they typically will have to be repotted a little earlier than something like a cattleya. Obviously, if the cattleya doesn't outgrow its pot first. So in the end, just observe your orchid, especially if you're using potting mixes you've never used before, you don't know how fast they degrade. If you manage to get away with two years with the same potting mix, you're good. It's pretty much the limit when it comes to disturbing your orchid. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pot this orchid really, really fast following my normal repotting technique, which you have linked down below. we are pretty much done. The good thing with Paphiopetalums is that sometimes they don't have a whole lot of roots. Some of them can create a lot of roots. This one didn't want to and it made repotting a lot easier. Now, after I repot, I personally always water my orchids, you guys know that, but especially with slipper orchids, which are not very drought tolerant, I think it's very important to actually water after repotting especially if the root system is in good condition and you didn't damage it way too much when repotting. And with that said, that's about it. The only thing I need to do is write the date on the tag in which I repot, just so I know when to replenish the slow release fertilizer. I'm actually writing the month and the year. 
and hopefully this orchid is good to go for another two years. Yeah, so that's about it on the maintenance repotting of the Paphiopetalum orchid. If you guys like me to make these videos for other types of orchids like Cattleyas, Dendrobiums and all sorts of other orchids, do let me know in a comment down below. Yeah, so do let me know down below. I know that some of you really, really enjoy repottings. I do too. I made so many repottings on my channel that, you know, I kind of took a break from them, but I do need to repot some of my orchids badly. I can definitely film them if you'd like me to. So let me know in a comment down below. And again, just visit the description if you want to learn more about Paphiopetalums. I have a lot of videos on them or just search, better yet, don't wait for me to post links. Sometimes I forget. Just search for it. It's so easy. Just search Miss Orchid Girl and whatever topic you can think of related to orchids, you're gonna find something on YouTube. Just play a little bit with the search function. Let me know how it goes. Let me know what very old videos you found that were very, very cringy, but they're out there. In 2000 videos, some of them are bound to be cringy. So yeah, have fun. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed hanging out with me today and I hope you have a great day. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And with that said, I'll see you next time. Bye!